Now, there are times when research can throw up surprises and challenge our understanding of what we thought we knew. And that's exactly what an international group of surgeons has found when they looked into whether isolating in the days before a surgery protected patients in the pandemic. What they didn't expect to find was that these patients went on to have a higher risk of lung complications, such as pneumonia, after their operation. And that risk was regardless of what surgery they were having. Dr Philip Townend is a surgeon from Gold Coast University Hospital and contributed to the research just published in the journal Anesthesia. He's speaking here to Sarah Sedgi. I guess we're going to expect that uh, by isolating people, you'd reduce their risk of developing COVID uh, and therefore lessen the mortality and the, and the complication rate after operating on these people. But the surprising finding of the paper was that actually you increase their risk of pulmonary complications, so lung complications, if you isolated them. And the longer that you isolated the patient, the higher risk to having complications in relation to their lungs, uh, COVID or not. How significant was that risk? Yeah, so if it's within three days, so isolating for 72 hours, that increases the risk of complication by 20%. Uh, three to eight days went up to 25%, and it was just over 30% if it was uh, over eight days. So, you know, it is significant. As you say, these findings took you by surprise. What do you think is going on? Well, there's a lot of uh, theories behind this, but the thought process being is that uh, by isolating people before an operation, they're less likely to exercise, they're more likely to, to sit on the couch. Nutritionally, they're probably not uh, as good nutritionally and also from a mental health side of things we do know that you know stress and anxiety has negative consequences for the body as, as well so I think it's a multitude of factors it's quite complex but the uh, the data is significant and, uh, and and we were surprised by that. And what do you think this means for patients given that isolating or you know being more cautious around our movements is going to be a, a feature of our lives for, for a while yet? Yeah, so I mean, it, it's it's difficult, and in different states and have different problems that they're dealing with at that particular point in time. But basically, we need to in encourage people if they are isolating in the in their particular uh, areas, is is to almost make that one hour of exercise mandatory, and getting out and 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 using that hour uh, to to get some sunlight, get outside, do some exercise, and looking after your health in isolation is really important because in, within eight days you can see that you know if you need an elective operation, you're a third more likely to, to get you know, lung complications, pneumonia and needing to go on a, on a ventilator after an operation. Uh, it, it's obviously worse in, in elderly patients and, uh, and patients with other uh, medical conditions, but it is significant. And these findings were part of a, a global initiative that's trying to understand the, the safety and outcomes of surgery during the pandemic. Uh, are you able to tell mm -hmm. me a bit more about that? So this is part of a, um, a global surge collaborative. Essentially, it's centred from a, a hospital uh, called the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham in the United Kingdom, a hospital that I used to work at. And basically, we were able to recruit over, over 1,600 hospitals around the world and over 100 countries to be able to to get data really quickly so that we can make decisions. So it's amazing, you know, how this uh, pandemic has just uh, hasn't really divided us from the medical community, but sort of, but actually, um, you know, made us communicate better with one another and and uh, collaborate to get results fast. What have you been able to learn about what is safest for patients during the pandemic through this collaboration? So apart from the isolation paper, we have some indication and some information on what it's like on operating on patients with COVID. There's a higher mortality rate. If, if we operate on someone in an elective setting and they've got an active COVID infection, they've got a 50% chance of developing a, a lung complication such as an pneumonia or, or, or requiring to go on a ventilator or, or another condition called acute respiratory distress syndrome. And that that increases the mortality rate. And a third of those patients will succumb and actually die if you operate on them with uh, coronavirus. And But that's also dependent on the type of operation you're doing. You know, a skin cancer is different from a, an appendix, is different from a gallbladder, which is different from a cancer operation. And But the general uh, feeling is from the surgical community is that if it's an elective operation and the person has coronavirus, don't operate unless you absolutely have to because you're increasing the risk of that patient dying and you're also increasing increasing the risk of the, pa the people in that operating theatre getting uh, coronavirus and subsequently passing that on to, um, to patients and other staff. 
Gold Coast University surgeon Dr Philip Townend speaking to Sarah. You're listening to Iron Cockerel.